No? Ah, here we go. I'd like to reopen a new session. Um, my name is Oliver Brock, and I have the great pleasure to introduce our next keynote speaker. The English dictionary defines a pioneer to be a person that originates a new line of thought, or a new method, or a new technical development. And you know, you could judge the effectiveness of a pioneer maybe by how far ahead of all the people that follow you you are, and by how many people follow you. So in that sense, uh, Professor Koichi Zutsumori is a fantastic pioneer. He works in soft robotics, a field that over the last decade maybe has, has gained a lot of attention. He started working on it in 1986. And if you maybe ignore deep learning for one second, then soft robotics, I think, is the second big trend in, in robotics. So it is a great pleasure to, to announce this talk by Professor Koichi Zutsumori from the Tokyo Institute of Technology. He um, will tell you about how a word, a Japanese word, ikagen, relates to the idea of soft robotics. He will also tell you about a project that started uh, last year in Japan um, that is funded with 1.2 billion yen. But still, I mean, the word billion, I think, is, um, <laughs> is very impressive. Um, so I think, I think what we're in for is, is a trip through Professor Zutomori's past, which will tell us what the future of soft robotics will look like. So with that, I would like to welcome to the stage and ask you to help me welcoming Professor Zutomori. Okay, th thank you very much for your introduction, Oliver. Thank you very much. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here to talk in this nice conference. Thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, I have developed various types of uh, soft robots, uh, as shown here. I'll talk about them, and uh, my I'll talk also about my pro perspective on soft robots. And this is my background. I had worked for uh, 18 years for Toshiba Corporation, <laughs> where I had worked on uh, robots in nuclear plants, medical robots, and MEMS and soft robots. <laughs> and in uh, 2001, I moved to academia. And uh, in Okayama University, I have uh, developed uh, various type of new actuators and the application. And uh, five years ago, I moved to the Tokyo Tech, and where I'm uh, working on new actuator for robots, especially uh, pneumatic thin muscle. This is uh, one of the today's topics, and hydraulic actuators. And I established a startup venture company to commercialize this uh, thin muscle. And uh, I have uh, four topics today. First, my soft robots from 1985 to 2010, which includes pneumatic rubber actuator and robots, and medical applications, and functional rubber surface for soft robots. And second, my current works for on soft robots, which includes uh, soft muscle fibers and the application shown here and the force-free pneumatic actuator, and IP IPMC actuator. Next, a Kaken project on soft robots in Japan, which we started uh, last year. And the soft robotics changing the value as Ikagen science. Do you know this word, Ikagen? So uh, I will tell you later. <laughs> OK, I will, uh, okay, sorry. I will start with my uh, soft robot soft robots from 1985 to 2010. Uh, some of them are already finished, but uh, I think there is a, they, they have still have the 
good hint for new software robots. And the first one is a flexible micro actuator if I may. This is my first uh, flex uh, software robot, which is developed in 1986. And it is made of fiber reinforced rubber and uh, driven pneumatically. And it has three internal chambers, and the pressure in the each can be controlled independently through this air supply hose. And the rubber, the rubber is reinforced with the fiber in the circular direction, as shown here. O also, you can find the fiber here. To so the rubber is easily deformed in the axial direction, while it leads to deformation in the radial direction. So the uh, so controlling the air pressure in each chamber results in the three degrees of freedom of motion, uh, pitch, yaw, and stretch. So. Okay, this, uh, this, this is a manipulator consisting of two FMAs here and here and mini gripper. So this manipulator has seven degrees of freedom in total. And this is the smallest one, uh, one millimeter in diameter. We, are apply we have applied s various robots and uh, the FMA has a uh, shape adaptability and uh, high compliance. It they can grasp and uh, manipulate the fragile object with uh, difficult uh, shapes. And this is a rough setting of the hand is enough to do this. And this is a contact lens. And uh, I, I'm often asked the fabrication process. So I'll uh, talk a little bit about it. And uh, we have several several process, but this is the um, most simplest one. We fabric, first we fabric is a, a new rubber tube with a fan-shaped uh, uh, cross-section here, using these molds, three molds, two outer molds, and uh, one internal mold, which has a fan-shaped cross-section, and uh, fabric to the fan-shaped rubber tube. Then we wind the fiber around it. And then we put with three tubes, put uh, three put uh, three pneumatic tube put into the one mold to fabric the outer layer, and uh, make them to one tube. And you can he see here the uh, fi fiber and this fiber. Okay, this is an improved uh, fabrication process. Uh, Sev uh, nine FMAs are fabricated at the same time, but uh, I'll skip, skip this slide. I don't have enough time today. So this is another application, uh, integrated FMAs, uh, five by five or 25 FMAs are fabricated on a base plate. And uh, these FMAs and the base plate uh, fabricate without the assembling process, process but uh, the fabricate through one uh, fabrication process with the stereolithography or 3D printing. And uh, base, uh, the base plate, in the base plate, air supply channels are also fabricated. And uh, these FMAs are uh, working together to uh, as a working as a conveyor. And this is our fabrication apparatus, which we have developed ourselves. This is a ultraviolet light source, a photo mask here. We have, we use several photo masks for this pro uh, fabrication and uh, pro optical lens. And uh, th th they are fabricated from the photo curable elastic materials and the uh, photo mask pattern are project on the surface of the resin, and this is this state, and the work is fabricated uh, in the vessel filled with the uh, resin. And this is a cross section of our prototype. You can hear the partition wall, partition four, which separates three chambers of FMA. And you can also see here the beams, several beams. Which, is, which are not uh, walls, but just uh, beams, just like uh, spokes in the bicycle, uh, bicycle wheel. 
and uh, they prevent the larger deformation of the, the this uh, pneumatic chip. We developed this uh, prototype uh, before 1994, and at that at that time there is no 3D printer and no good uh, photocurable elastic materials. So unfortunately, we finished this uh, this research at a very early developing stage. But we have a very good, nice uh, 3D printer and good material now. So I'd like to. Uh, try it again. This is another uh, example, fiberless FMA. As uh, I mentioned, uh, uh, the original FMA is reinforced with the fiber in the circular direction. So this makes the uh, fabrication proces process difficult. So we designed the fiberless FMA. We applied the uh, FEM, finite element method based, optimum design to design the uh, uh, cross-section of the, the FMA. And uh, this is, uh, uh, these numbers are iteration numbers. And uh, this is a uh, evaluation function. We, uh, we repeat uh, FEM analy an analysis and uh, sh shape improvement uh, to make the, this, uh, bending angle lambda bigger and uh, radio direction radio expansion small and uh, after the 28 iterations we got the final result you can see here that this is a normal fma with fiber and this is a deformation of fibrous fma before optimization so these two fmas have the same uh, cross section and this is an optimized design of fiberless FMA. As you can see here, the optimization uh, realizes a small expansion in the radio direction, which means that durability is uh, becomes very, very better, much better. So next, I would, uh, I think the most one of the most promising application of soft robots is in the medical field, and uh, I will talk two examples. One, uh, okay, one is a self-propelling colonoscope. Do you have the experience of a colonoscope inspection? No? It's, it's sometimes very hard for patients, sometimes. <laughs> but for the doctor, even for the experienced doctor, it is not easy to insert the scope into the large in, uh, intestine because large intestine uh, is uh, very flexible and uh, has a very complicated shape so we we, we do we are doing this research and uh, we wind the rubber hose around the scope and it work it works do you understand how this works <laughs> do you know we fabricate the scene to thin rubber hose, which has three internal chambers, and applying the air pressure to each chamber sequentially for the this, this motion. And we wind the two, two rubber hose in parallel, spirally around the scope. So blue one and the red one, and drive, the, drive them with a half weight difference. So when the red, red one is in the at the standing position, standing phase, uh, blue one is uh, at the uh, swinging phase. So uh, wa walking motion is realized. So as you can see here, that this is a F FEM result, and uh, it, it this is a real time movie, and uh, this is uh, inserting uh, test. And this is an image from the colonoscope camera, and it actually works uh, very well to like this. So th this work is still being uh, doing uh, my by my colleague. The other application is X-ray X-ray stomach diagnosis. I heard that uh, stomach cancer 
It's not common in Europe, right? No. But, but in Japan, the stomach cancer is very often found, and uh, this uh, X-ray uh, diagnosis is very popular and important. Uh, patient takes a barium, and uh, this is a uh, X-ray source, and this is a uh, X-ray image uh, detected. So the image of uh, stomach uh, can be uh, obtained. But to get a clear image of the stomach wall like this, this is not clear. The doctor needs to move the barium in stomach to get a clear image. And at current, the doctor asks the patient to roll over on the bed, or the doctor change the tilting of the bed to move the barium in the stomach. So, but it is not uh, very efficient. So we developed uh, uh, pneumatic actuators, which is uh, uh, used between the patient body and the bed and push the human's body to move the volume in the stomach. Ma our actuator has uh, five internal pneumatic chambers, and the doctor uh, can control the pushing force and the pushing direction using the joystick and uh, he can move the volume in stomach, and he, he can check the portion which he wants to check. We apply this uh, device more than 80 real pa patient, and uh, we get uh, good uh, mechanical, uh, medi medical ex evidence. Okay, next uh, topic is uh, functional surface of soft robots or rubber surface improvement. Uh, this, is a, this is a surface control of soft robot. This is a micro rubber finger. Uh, this is a, which, I, which is developed in my laboratory. And this is a fish egg. And in general, releasing, releasing the object is much more difficult than grasping because there are uh, several surface tension, surface forces such as uh, adhesion force or uh, viscosity or uh, uh, surface tension between the grasp object and the finger. So one of the one method to solve this problem is to fabricate a tiny object on the surface of the uh, finger, finger surface. So th th this example are uh, tiny pillars. Each is 0 0.2 one millimeter in diameter, and they increase the water repellency, as you can see here, uh, making the releasing easily. Next example is uh, integrated micro suction caps, which can work uh, even on the last surface. Uh, this is a single cap model. And uh, these uh, integrated uh, suction cap model. This model has 144 caps, each is 0 0.5 uh, mi millimeters. And this is a model called <coughs> caps in cap. And this is a modified version. The this uh, this suction cap has an unsymmetric shape, which realizes an isotropic suction cap, which is useful for the sole of the robot leg. Some, sometimes uh, strong adhesion is required, but to move to the swing phase, uh, easy peering is necessary, so this works well. We applied this suction, this device to a real wall, but the real situation is complicated. For example, this wall has two kinds of irregularity. One is a big bump here, the big bump here, and the other irregularity is uh, surf surface roughness here. In this uh, uh, example, finger pr fingerprint shows a uh, small roughness, and uh, palm deformation shows a big wet. And in general, designing the uh, suction cap, which is working both irregularity is difficult, but uh, optimized design can do it. Uh, I'm afraid we don't have uh, enough time today, so speaking briefly our results, 
the integ integrated cap works very well for big, big irregularity, but too small cap doesn't work for on the surface roughness. We applied this device to the wall climbing robot. This, uh, this robot has a floor with a micro suction cap. This robot uh, has a still have a problem on stability. Maybe you can guess the movie is very short. <laughs> Soon dropped. But uh, actually, it actually works in short time. <laughs> and this is an un unsymmetric, uh, unisotropic uh, rubber sole and uh, simple linear motion realize a one way uh, walking. This slide shows another application example. This is this rubber legs uh, realize a passive walking. I think I'm afraid that this is uh, still big, but uh, more miniaturization will realize uh, rubber surface with a very small friction. And this is a rubber surface showing the structural color, uh, which has a, a tiny structure in one or two micron level on the rubber surface. And the color, uh, structural color change, changing, uh, depending on the deformation of the rubber. So I, I think that we can apply this this mechanism to a tactile sensor. OK, this is uh, my work in the past. Some of them are still g going. And uh, next, I will talk about my current works on soft robots. First one, thin Makiban muscle. Uh, do you know Makiban muscle? Yes? Can I skip this? No? Anyone <laughs> want to explain? Uh, yes, uh, then I will uh, tell uh, speak the uh, very briefly. This is a very well-known uh, artificial muscle uh, driven pneumatically. It is uh, originally invented in Germany in 1948, very old one and well-known. And uh, it consists of a rubber tube here and braided around it and applying the air pressure <laughs> into the rubber tube result in the contraction in the actual direction. And uh, it works as a human uh, muscle muscles. So we developed a uh, thin muscle. The structure and working principle of this muscle is exactly the same with the conventional muscle. But uh, we have achieved the miniaturization and the mass production. And uh, the com typical uh, conventional Makibe muscle is about one, uh, a few centimeters in diameter. And our muscle is one to four millimeters in diameter. It is uh, there, uh, thin and uh, flexible enough to be used as a uh, muscle filament, resulting in the many uh, potential applications. Uh, we established a startup venture bank company uh, to commercialize this muscle. Please visit our, uh, you can buy. Ah, this movie shows a uh, fabrication process. This is a braiding machine. And this is, uh, this is a rubber tube. This is a rubber tube, which is a uh, 1.8 millimeter and cords are, are braided around it. This is a fabrication process, typical one. And but miniaturization is not very easy. This slide shows uh, some typical problem with Makibe muscle with miniaturization. First one is uneven expansion. You can find a big expansion here, but a very small expansion here. This is a severe case of this one. The rubber tube turns, turns uh, around, turns around in the blade. So we call uh, snake swall swallowing act. And the uh, rubber cut by fiber and uh, blade rubber, hernia and hernia. 
And uh, we have solved this, this kind of problem by improving the materials and the fabrication process. We are weaving this muscle, this thin muscle, to uh, create the active fabric. These two examples are contracting uh, active fabrics. But uh, what interesting is here is that uh, they show the bigger contracting ratio than that of the single original single muscle. That is very interesting. And these are bending uh, fabrics, and uh, th this consists this they consist of uh, muscle in this direction, in this direction, and uh, elastic cord is in this direction. Elastic cord, elastic cord means uh, is not uh, the muscle, but just a uh, passive elastic cord. But but uh, the what interesting is the uh, bending direction is different. So we can design the many kind of bending motion by changing the weaving patterns. Okay, I, I will show four examples of these uh, thin muscles. First one is uh, power assist wear. This is uh, our final goal image of uh, our, our research. And uh, we believe the active uh, fabrics can be can realize the right weight and soft and uh, comfortable uh, power support dress. And our research appears uh, on many mass media and many reporters have uh, had tried to wear. Many, many voices, too many voices to catch it. So please watch these two movies. Two reporters is talking about the feeling of youth。あ、すごいたち上がりやすいですよ。あ、そうですか。はい。肩を持ち上げられる感じかなと思ったんですが、どっちかっていうとお尻を上げられるような感じですね。これあの硬いモーターだとか、やっぱりあの太い人工
based on the anatomy textbook and、uh, many advices from the medical doctors. And what s interesting is、uh, that similar structure results in a similar property. This robot shows a kinema- kinematic and、uh, dynamic property very similar, similar to the human body.、Uh, this okay. This robot, these robots are very redundant mechanisms. So I'm afraid、uh, it is difficult for commercial motors to drive this kind of、um, uh, redundant, redundant system. Because、uh, conventional motors are too stiff to work in cooperation. But this muscle can do it because、uh, it's, uh, they are very compliant. I think the last thing is very human like motion. Okay, okay so,、uh, next application example is Giacometti Robotics. We are developing a very thin and very long robot and、uh, named Giacometti Robot after the name of the Switzerland artist Giacometti, Albert Giacometti. And he, he is famous with a very thin sculpture, as you know. And、uh, I think conventional, conventional or tra- traditional robotics have been seeking for higher function and、uh, uh, higher ability. This results in the good robot, but they sometimes, they often become、uh, expensive and heavy and sometimes dangerous. So, Giacometti, the idea of Giacometti robot is、uh, to realize essential function, only exen- essential function by removing ex- excess parts like his works. This results in the poor robot as a power and accuracy, but it is、uh, essentially safe. This is、uh, one example of the Giacometti robot, which is delivering with、uh, our thin muscle. It is 1.2 meters, and he hesitates to go down or not, but drops down. But there are almost no damage on robot and environment and person. People around there. This robot, the Giacometti robot, is essentially safe. This is another application, another example of Giacometti robot. 20 meter very long robot arm. This is an image, camera image from this camera. And、uh, it is、uh, made of helium filled、uh, balloon. And、uh, it has、uh, 20, 20 joints. Which is driven with the, uh, this uh, camera and this uh, muscle, which drives the、uh, joint, and this、uh, control panel. And、uh, okay, this is our、uh, operator here. And the robot enters the roof window to approach、uh, th- this、uh, pipe, and、uh, you can see here the You can see here the pipe like this. And what's important in, in this scene is the robot n e g o t i a t e to the roof window to ab- approach the pipe. But the arm can contact the contraction with no damage. This is a very different from the conventional robotics. But we can say that the robot, robot arm, Find the、uh, approaching path by themselves. J- just、uh, operator control, just put,、uh, put it in inside. But、uh, the、uh, approaching path can be found by the mechanical, mechanical robot itself. That is very interesting. And someone might say that a drone,、uh, drone can do this, 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 one, this. but、uh, I'm afraid control. Control drone enough, safe enough to con- 
entered uh, this window is very not easy and uh, sometimes difficult. So this robot is essentially safe, even if it falls down. <coughs> this is uh, soft doesn't mean the weakness, weak. Well, our robot is soft, strong and soft robot. These, these are used here. The muscle is, this is a hydraulic muscle working with uh, Bridgeston and uh, it is, they are very strong and uh, very uh, durable for the vibration and the impact like this. This is very strong, the each generates the one ton. One ton contracting force. The di diameter of diameter is only the one uh, 15 meter. Okay. Next, I will talk about uh, air-free uh, pneumatic uh, air-free pneumatic actuator. We are trying to reversible gas liquid phase change change chemical reactions, uh, electrolysis and synthesis of, of water. We use a uh, proton exchange membrane pen and uh, control the chemical reaction by controlling the electrical current. When we apply the electrical current to the pen, uh, oxygen gas and hydrogen gas are generated from the water and uh, increasing the volume and the pressure. And on the other hand, we, we uh, connect uh, both electrodes, the current, or connect them to the empty capacitor. And the current occurs, and the gases return to the water, and the pressure volume decrease. But what's important uh, here is that the this works as a fuel cell during the gas absorption process. This means that we can uh, recover the energy. The we can realize a high efficient driving system. And uh, this is a ah, this is a real time movie. This is a PEM and uh, this is a hydrogen gas phase, hydrogen gas. And uh <coughs> this is a oxygen gas, oxygen gas side. So we can, as we can see here, we can control the uh, <coughs> generation and the absorption of the gases <coughs> by the current. And this uh, prototype has a PEM inside here. Uh, this uh, rubber bag is filled with the water. And uh, you can see here. I don't know for why that this doesn't work. OK. This is a water and this is a hydrogen gas. This is an interface here. This is also the real-time movie. And uh, we can control the gas generation abs and absorption uh, by the electri electrical current. And uh, you can see here the deformation of the rubber bag can be controlled without the air supply force. Sorry. Uh, this is uh, our first prototype robot, air force free pneumatic robot. It uh, needs no air supply hose here. And these are uh, bellow type uh, pneumatic rubber actuators. And PEM is inside, and uh, which is driven with the electrical current and this battery and electrical, electrical, electrical uh, circuit has a wireless function. Wireless uh, communication function. So this robot is uh, perfectly the uh, tetherless uh, robot. This shows inside, PEM here and water here, and the generation of the gases uh, makes the actuator bend. And uh, in the absor absorption, the gases return to the water, and the uh, <coughs> uh, arm is returned to the initial shape. And this arch portion means. Uh, uh, making makes the robot jump, increasing the uh, pressure inside, uh, realize a buckling of this portion like this, buckling. It makes the robot this robot jump. 
And uh, we are now uh, applying this mechanism to thin macbane muscle. Uh, we fabricated the uh, PEM tube here, and uh, got, uh, we put, put it into, into the thin muscle. <coughs> ah, sorry. And uh, the water is filled with uh, field in the, the muscle, and uh, the gases are generated inside of the outside of the, this PEM tube. Uh, this is our first prototype. You can see here the PEM tube, very fast prototype, and you can see the generation of gas. This is water, and this is hydrogen gas, and uh, you can see the motion of this uh, muscle. But uh, this is a very fast prototype, and uh, it has uh, still uh, many problems. One is the uh, speed is very small, and uh, PEM is uh, very stiff and uh, size is big. So recently we successfully developed a soft PEM tube, uh, which is inside the, of this muscle, and this is this will be the will be presented in IOS this year in Macau. Okay, next I will talk about that. Uh, IPMC actuator, ionic polymer metal composite actuator. Do you know this actuator? This is also s uh, famous. <coughs> and the materials of the, this actuator is uh, the same material which is used in the uh, air force free actuators. So th that is the reason why we are doing this uh, research. And uh, when applying the voltage, the cation and the water in the PEM move to one side and actually the bent. We, these are our prototype. We fabricate uh, from the chemical liquid using a 3D printer or uh, casting, uh, casting, casting, casting process. And this shows the uh, fabrication process. We, uh, the, uh, we fabricate this robot from the li chemical liquid to and uh, bake after baking, we can get uh, this mm, uh, body. And after that, we fabricated uh, uh, electrodes on both sides of the actuator. Okay. Next, I will talk. Uh, I will move third topics. Uh, this project is, uh, is started last year, and uh, this is outlined. Next stands for the Ministry of Education Japan, and Kaken is uh, one of the most uh, popular uh, research fund uh, for academia in Japan. Mm -hmm. And there are many types of uh, Kaken, but uh, soft robot Kaken is a uh, teamwork. So many researchers are joining this project. And the official name is Science of Soft Robot Interdisciplinary Integration of Mechatronics, Material Science, and Biocomputing. So as shown in this uh, name, the many researchers from various fields are joining this project. And the head of investigator is me. And the uh, project term is five years starting last year. And the uh, budget is 1.2 billion Japanese yen, or about, uh, or about 10 million euro, right? And this shows the background of this project. As mm. you know, the recently many researches on softness uh, have been born. <laughs> for example, soft in various fields. Uh, for exa example, uh, soft ex electronics and soft machines in mechatronics, gel 3D printing and biological materials in material science, and soft computing and biocomputing in uh, computer science. But these research are bad research from the viewpoint of conventional robotics. For example, the robot arm which is easily deformed by the road is a bad mechanical design in the conventional robotics. And these materials are very unstable. 
and listen to AI returns a different answer at each time. <coughs> so these, these are bad researches from the viewpoint of conventional traditional engineering, but they, act, they work very well, actually. So our goal is to integrate these results to create a new robot discipline, soft robot. I think the conventional robotics is based on the conventional value of conventional engineering. That is speed, force, accuracy, and certainty. But uh, this result, as you know, this result is a great success in industry. But uh, I'm afraid we are facing a limit of conventional robotics. The today's robot uh, cannot, uh, still cannot uh, some performances in daily life, which uh, uh, living creature can easily do. For example, it is very difficult, it is not easy for today's robot to hang a baby with a model to touch. So uh, the so soft robotics which we are aiming at is based on the value of biological system. Flexibility, adaptability, I will explain later. And this shows a uh, research framework and many uh, researchers joining this project. And we started this project last year with uh, nine designated uh, subjects, and uh, which are divided to three groups. A01 group, a flexible and elastic body. A02 group for flexible motion. A03 group uh, intelligence. And I will briefly each three uh, groups. Uh, A01 group pass, pass uh, flexible body. The in the conventional robotics, the body doesn't change. But the uh, body of a soft robot easily change its shape and easily change its uh, mechanical properties because they sometimes made of the unstable materials. And uh, we have three subjects, elastic trunk, growing, destroying body, and flexibility wing, wing, and each are very interdisciplinary working. For example, this group, uh, researchers on in robotics, are researchers in zoology, and researchers in uh, mathematics are working together to realize a, a elastic trunk. And uh, a0 group, A02 group for uh, flexible motions. It uh, has uh, energy harvesting uh, skill, a uh, skin, gel robot mechanism, and the muscle. This is my group. Uh, two researchers in mechatronics and two chemists are working together, and they developed a new functional material, so that we made it them to the actual muscle. And the A03 group uh, is a flexible intelligence. It, this is a uh, interesting, this is a walking gel in which self oscillating chemical chemical reaction occur and uh, with it generates the motion and uh, the an ana uh, they are ana they are ana an analyze and uh, control the motion with a stochastic processing. This is an interesting uh, robot, do you know? This is a famous in Japan. This, uh, this is an example of machine learning based on the polymer properties. It uh, starts with Shinji, a famous Japanese <laughs> So we, we can using <laughs> we can doing uh, this kind of research, and uh, this is a future vision. This is the end of the, our project, but we want to extend our uh, uh, activity to the in the future. And uh, the, this project mainly focused on the academic development, but uh, soft robotics is a kind of a practical robotics. So we want to up extend our results to the real society working with the industry and uh, working under as another project. Okay, let me conclude my talk with uh, my opinion. Uh, robot, soft robotics changing the value as a science. 
I think the soft robotics is a value changer in robotics. Soft robot soft robots realize shape adaptability, back durability, passive force control, stress dispersion, gentle touch, essential safety, and light weight. But these features are sometimes bad features in the uh, conventional, traditional robotics. The uh, traditional robotics uh, has been seeking for the force, speed, and accuracy. And we have... Uh, how, how, how many persons uh, are speaking in Japanese here? So may maybe you understand what we say. But we have interesting, uh, interesting word, Japanese word, ikage. This uh, word is uh, very interesting, which has uh, two opposite meaning. One is a negative me meaning irresponsible, sloppy, unreliable. But uh, it has also positive meaning, moderate, adaptable, appropriate, and suitable. And uh, I think this word uh, represents the both aspect of a soft robot. And, uh, okay. I, I want to say something here, but <laughs> I forgot <laughs> what. <laughs> OK, <laughs> I remember it next. But uh, and the Ikange trend, this Ikange trend is found not only in the robotics, but also recently found in other uh, scientific fields. For example, conventional si uh, computer science has, be s has been seeking for power, certainty, and reliability, but uh, current AI returns a uh, different answer at each time. It's a very uncertainty. And um, material scientists has been seeking for the stability and strength. But they are now developing uh, unstable materials. In the background of this Ikagen trend, in the background of Ikagen trend, I think that is a, there is a his historical meaning of science and uh, technology. In the past, power and accuracy are the most important for a human being to survive and grow the society bigger. But uh, at current, I think the situation is changing. At current, gentleness and flexibility becomes much more important for sustainable, sustainable society. And uh, this causes uh, value change, value change in science and technology, and a typical example of Ikangen. And uh, I think the robotics, not only soft robotics, robotics can be the pioneer of this academic trend in uh, Ikange, Ikange trend. So uh, this is my conclusion. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for this inspiring and beautiful presentation. Uh, I think you showed the breadth of, of the research in soft robotics and I guess the pitfalls of hard robotics. I'm sure there must be questions. Yeah. So. Thank you. I, I can only share what uh, Oliver has just talked. I mean, it's amazing talk. It's wonderful. I have visited your lab when I was a student a long time ago, and uh, I was really, really impressed by this uh, like hand uh, that you were showing me how it works, and you were enthusiastic about it. Uh, I'm really Im impressed on how the things moved forward. Uh, I have just a question uh, which probably will relate to this Ika again. So you you know that there is th something which is hidden behind this nice actuator is always 
the pump which is bringing the air inside and the, the whole uh, electro servo valves that is providing this. And uh, I'm thinking whether, uh, my, ask, my question is whether the whole package can be miniaturized and seen as an ECAGN or do you still have this hard part which are hidden that nobody wants to see that are making the things <coughs> there but they are bulky and not easily embedded? The pneumatic actuator and also hydraulic actuator are very effective in the very limited situations. Y as you, you say, uh, there are uh, many pumps and uh, valves. And uh, so, so for that pro to solve that problem, I, I am uh, uh, doing the research on air source so free actuator. And, uh, but uh, so, Pneumatic fluid actually has uh, some very limited uh, uh, application, and but ekang I'm not sure, but ekang uh, is much wider concept. So ekang doesn't matter s such a problem. <laughs> it sometimes uh, work very well. I if the we can hide the pump and valves, but uh, someone concerned uh, that. But uh, in the uh, so your question is very complicated, so I can't uh, uh, explain well. But uh, uh, someone doesn't mat matter. So such a problem, it can. Of course, it's the problem of the such fluid actuator, but uh, they have the much bigger advanced of the in some application. So the concept of the can considered uh, not uh, considering the sm small things, but <laughs> wider things. That uh, I, I'm sorry, I can't explain it well. Okay. Somebody else have a question? Uh, thanks a lot for the great talk. Um, I'm, I'm curious a little bit if you could comment on sensing or perception for soft robotics. Do you see any different types of sensors that you maybe could directly integrate in the actuators, or would you use classical hard sensors, so to speak, <laughs> um, on top of that? Uh, so, uh, so, so um, sensing. Yeah, sensing on f sensing for soft robotics, mm. how that could look like. Mm. Uh, th there is uh, many opinion uh, at uh, th this point. One one opinion is maybe is, um, many people will not uh, know, agree, but uh, one opinion: the many sensor system system with many sensor system makes the system difficult. <laughs> Maybe you don't, uh, many of them uh, doesn't agree. But uh, the, for example, this is my first FMA can work very uh, turning, making a turn the bolt. It, it, they, they have no, no sensors. So making the system easily and uh, uh, very practical. What this is a very, uh, Extremely uh, one side uh, opinion. But one, one opinion is a sensorless system can work as an ECAN system. But of course, I agree that sensor is important and uh, the making the many sensors to information from the many sensors to be handled. Uh, AI and uh, s some other uh, s method is uh, ma making the also making the ECAN robot greater. So there, there's a many opinion and uh, perspective. Thank you for a great talk. I was wondering, um, do you think you will ever reach uh, accuracy enough? Um, to do things that traditional robots do in factories, or is it uh, important to reach this accuracy at all? Uh, 
It depends. It depends on application. Uh, I don't. I, I like uh, also. I like uh, conventional robotics. I, I don't uh, dislike the conventional robotics, but uh, it depends. Some, uh, some in some application, current accuracy is not enough, and uh, the further research based on the conventional robotics is important. Still, is very important, and uh, in the dep it depends on the application. But in the another application, accuracy is not important. That's my opinion. If there are no more questions, I oh, there's a question, bomber. I wanted to ask one. Uh, hi, thank you for the very interesting talk. So you started this in 90s, where the community were involved with neural nets and control theory, and it turned to be the next big thing, soft robotics today. So uh, how you um, how you get into this uh, back then? So kind of uh, um, early career researchers can uh, may maybe mimic to find something that's going to be the next big thing in the next 20 years. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not very good at the English, so. <laughs> So, so I guess the question is, how did you have the vision to start doing soft robotics 20 years before everybody else did it? Huh? How? Well, <laughs> so, so you were much ahead of your time. You started doing soft robotics in 1986. Yeah. How did you come up with this idea, which at that point was very new, and people didn't have that idea, right? So, so he wants to know how he can have a similar idea <laughs> To, to have a successful career like um. yours. <laughs> but uh, not only soft robotics, there is a many similar situation in mechatronics. For example, uh, electrostatic actuator has been sold the very bad actuator for a long time. The history of soft uh, electrostatic actuator is much more older than the electromagnetic actuator, but uh, they, they, they have, have been sold the bad actuator. But uh, in nine, around 1990, MEMS technology came up, and it, the electrostatic actuator becomes a very practical uh, actuator. That kind of uh, example, we have uh, that kind of example in the uh, mechatronics history. So I think the soft robotics is one of them. And uh, the actually, uh, uh, at that time, first, uh, at that time when I, I had, uh, I began this research, soft robot research, I was working for Toshiba Corporation. And uh, the target is a medical product, product to insert the, uh, in the body, and uh, we don't, th we didn't think that to realize a soft robot, but just to the, to the device which can be uh, entered through the body, that result in the soft robot. But at that time, uh, I don't have a clear image to aim for the soft robot. But uh, about ten years. These ten, 10 years, as you know, the soft robots become very active, and uh, I feel happy <laughs> because <laughs> uh, I was invited here. So, and right. uh, please, uh, I should not <laughs> please refer my papers <laughs> in the past. Uh. So, um, I think the fact that there's lunch waiting outside and nobody has gone to get lunch, speaks very much to the topic that you presented, to the research that you presented, and also to your beautiful presentation. So please, everybody, join me in thanking <laughs> you one more time for this great Th keynote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, th thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>